Evet, katılımcılarımızın gelmesini bekliyoruz. Evet, merhabalar herkese. Hepiniz IFT Talks webinarlarına hoş geldiniz. Bugün Hollanda'nın önde gelen üniversitesi Leiden Üniversitesi yüksek lisans programlarını okul temsilcisi Karolin'den dinliyor olacağız. Lütfen sorularınızı soru cevap bölümünden yönlendiriniz. Ee, herkese iyi seyirler. Yes, Karolin, the stage is yours now. Thank you so much for having me today and welcome to everyone who is in the audience today. I'm happy that you're going to share a little bit of time with me today. My name is Carolyn Barr and I work for Leiden University and I help all the incoming international students from all around the world, whether it's bachelor, master or PhD students. And I'm here today to talk about studying masters at Leiden University. So I hope throughout the session, you'll put your questions in the Q&A as you've been instructed and I'll get to the questions at the very end. Um, perhaps some of them will be uh, answered by some of the presentation slides that I will use, but uh, but please let me know what it is you need to uh, to have more details on so we can help get you connected to the right people and the right information. So I'm going to get started um, to tell you a little bit about the university in a nutshell, so you get a sense of who we are as an institution. And we are a large public research university here in the Netherlands. That means over 34,000 students. The good news is that you'll never feel like it's a massive institution like that because all the students are spread across our seven faculties, which are also spread across two cities of Leiden and The Hague. And I'll talk about Leiden and The Hague as student cities a bit later. But it just feels like every faculty will feel a little smaller, a little bit more um, yeah, small scale. So you'll get to know other people in your faculty. Um, you won't feel such like a number at the university. It's mainly uh, making sure that you really have a connection you know, with the faculty that you're attending. And there are thousands of international students from many, many different nationalities, absolutely including Turkey, which is why we do our, our presentations to you here today. Um, and we have over 80 uh, master programs. and about 200 specializations. I say about because there are changes every year, um, but it gives you an idea of the sheer number of subjects you can study at the university because we are a large comprehensive institution, meaning many, many different subjects are available. And we are world famous for our research. So you may know a little bit about Lyon University or you might've heard about us before. Um, so there's quite a lot of different research going on at the university itself. And I wanted to give you a little bit of an idea about that. And of course, there's many, many different um, focuses that you'll have at the different university faculties that we have. But I'd say that there's three main, or sorry, five main groupings of research that go on at the university. And this relates directly to the master programs that are available at Leiden. And so you'll see them here on the screen, fundamentals of science, life sciences, health and well-being, law, politics and administration, and languages, cultures and societies. These broadly overarch all the faculties that we have. And there is a main theme of artificial intelligence that you'll find across all the research that's going on at the university. But I think a lot of students are very much um, intrigued to find out about sort of those, those areas of focus that we have. And hopefully one of these areas broadly relates to what you wanna be studying at your master level. Um, because of course I can't go into every single program. Um, you will have to go to our website to do a bit of a research um, as to um, which exact programs are there, what specializations are available to see if that really suits your research interest as well. Um, but I'll also talk about eligibility, which speaks a little bit to this too. But you'll see here, the areas of expertise cover our seven faculties and more. So we have our Faculty of Archaeology, which is um, unique in the Netherlands. We have our very own full-on faculty. So students who are looking at um, that as their master program, if you've done a, a, B, a bachelor in archaeology, that would be an option for you. But you'll see a number of humanities here. This is something we're very highly ranked for around the world. So things like area studies, so languages, culture, history, um, things like uh, linguistics, the study of languages, how they make us human, for example. Um, you'll see a number of the arts and culture kind of, of, of focus that we have here. Um, many, many different areas in the humanities. We also have our Faculty of Medicine. So you'll find biomedical and biopharmaceutical sciences there, for example, um, life sciences. It's not possible to do um, a Master of Medicine at, uh, at the university in English, so that's why it's not listed there. 
Um, but we have our faculty of science, which also you'll see things like computer science. Again, those life and environmental sciences will will pick up here. Um, you'll be looking at um, other aspects of uh, the fundamental sciences too. So many specializations in this particular area, for example. And you'll see our governance and global affairs and politics and policy kinds of, of, uh, of programs, which really often fall under either our faculty of governance and global affairs or our faculty of social sciences. So they do have a bit of an overlap, but then you'd be looking at also things like psychology and cultural anthropology. So this should give you a bit of an idea of what to expect. And last but not least, our law programs at the Faculty of Law or Leiden Law School are also something that are very popular with students all around the world. So you'll see that we don't do business. We also really don't do um, a lot of engineering, for example, but there are some technical programs in our science uh, faculty. But these are areas that are um, absent from our particular list overall. There are other Dutch institutions that offer these particular programs, but Leiden focuses in these areas of expertise. And we are a research university, so that means we are focused on research intensive one or two year master programs. So most are one year programs. But if you're doing an extra research program that might be two years in length or the faculty of science where they're two years in length for certain, um, these will be able to lead you onto PhD programs, for example. Um, that doesn't mean that a one year program can't also do that, but students who are really geared towards continuing with their research, they may be choosing um, you know, an, an option that gives them an extra year. Now, it's very student-centered, very interactive in the Netherlands, and that also means that, that the teaching is like that at Leiden University as well. So you will have taught courses uh, in your programs, but you'll also have your final project or your thesis, which is really a good chunk of what you're going to be doing within your program. You'll be uh, creating you know, your, your topic based on your specialization that you're studying. You will have a supervisor, and you'll, you'll put together your main project or your thesis through your entire program. I think in the Netherlands, it's quite important to know that you do have the support and, and there is a focus on your career path, but it's also quite flat in the sense that it's not hierarchical. So you tend to get to know your professors quite well. Um, you'll end up being able to debate and discuss with them. Um, so there's not as much distance between you and your professor as there might be in other countries. So it's a different kind of academic culture here in, in the Netherlands as well. So it's just good to mention that. And we really do focus on forming your own opinion. Um, so that means you have to be able to uh, follow your studies, you have to be able to do your research, really be able to, to back up, but also form your own opinion and share that with others. So it's critical uh, in terms of our academic uh, focus overall. Now, in terms of, and I'm just going to see here if I can, oh, no, didn't do it. Um, I want to talk about eligibility because the number one question that we do get from students um, is that, you know, how can I get in? You know, what, what, um, what's the most important thing that you're looking for when you're looking at uh, admissions and so forth. And this is a difficult question to answer, mainly because every program is different. And when we're asking about are you eligible, there's a few things that you can take a look at on your own to make an educated decision as to whether you're a good fit for the program. And that means looking at those program specific requirements on the program website. You'll need to compare the background that they're looking for, the credentials that they're looking for, um, to what you have done. And only if you, of course, do know that. So for example, if I might take something like psychology, it may list a good 10 or 12 courses that you must have. You have to have a bachelor of psychology. Um, they'll have very specific areas you might've had to do research in, for example. Uh, another program might have a, a very similar request with certain uh, number of points that are required or study points in a particular uh, area of study, certain research methods, courses, and so forth. Some may be a little bit more um, uh, flexible in what they're looking for, but they usually will list very specifically the academic background. If you feel you have that academic background, then um, you're definitely welcome to apply to the program. We can't tell you ahead of time if you're admissible because the admissions office has to assess an entire application that is complete with all your documents and all the information that they may be asking for. The admissions office at the program will then take a look and see if they think that you meet those criteria and decide uh, on the admissions offer that they may be giving you. So again, you'll have to look at having that academic background. And in the Netherlands, generally having a bachelor in the area that you're wanting to study your master is required. It's very uh, difficult, if not impossible, to switch disciplines uh, between a bachelor and a master. But in the end, you do have to apply to find out. Now, a lot of the application process is about reading the instructions. Uh, and on our website, we're fairly extensive with the instructions and all the information about the programs. So please exhaust the links and please exhaust the information that is there when you're going through this process and when you're learning about the programs. 
make sure that you look at the deadline for the start date that you might be looking at. So most of our programs have both a September and a February intake, though some don't, some only have a September intake, but look at what the deadline would be for you depending on when you're starting. More often than not, it's around April 1st for our September deadline and around October 15th for the non-EU or non-EU citizens for our February intake. The EU citizens have a little bit more uh, flexibility, but not too much, usually about a month later, um, because they don't require student visas, for example, or permits. But every program may have a slightly different deadline, and depending on your citizenship or your, or your EU or non-EU status, that will dictate your particular deadline. Um, applications that come in after a deadline do not have to be assessed, so being before a deadline is quite critical. Now, you also have to look at what's required. So look at the documents that are required um, for that particular program. Do you, you'll need your diplomas and transcripts. You may require English proficiency scores, depending on your situation. Maybe they ask for a letter of motivation or a CV or even a research proposal, for example. There might be other um, documents that you have to provide. So it's important to have those ahead of time uh, and make sure that you're going to be having as full of an application when you apply as possible. It is possible to send in some documents later on, but it's better to have a complete application if you can before you apply. And the application process is uh, twofold at Leiden University. You'll start in our government database called StudiLink. You'll register your interest there and you'll, you'll list the programs that you might be applying to in StudiLink. Within 24 to 48 hours, you will get a response from Leiden University with a link so you can actually do the applications for the programs that you're interested in doing. So it's quite important when you're looking at applying to Leiden to keep an eye on your email, keep an eye on your junk or your spam filters, just to make sure the emails don't get lost somewhere. Um, these are days of, you know, this is, this is what happens with modern applications, of course, um, but I usually just point it out just in case uh, overall. And of course, then you fill in the forms, you upload the documents that have been required, and you submit the online application form. There is an application fee of 100 euro, which will cover up to applications to three programs. So if you can't make a decision, you can apply for up to three at the university. And then of course, you'll await the admissions decision, which often is between about six and eight weeks after a full submitted application is um, um, submitted. Now, if it's around a deadline, it could take a little longer. So that's something to, to note as well. So applying as soon as you're able um, and before a deadline is always good advice. Now, I want to talk a little bit about um, Leiden itself, because students, you know, when I talk to them all around the world, and certainly students from Turkey, I ask them, you know, why in the end did you choose Leiden University? You know, what about it was the, the critical piece for you? Um, you know, what was the best part of the matching, you know, uh, between you and your program, for example? Because um, I always like to have those conversations with students, and they, they come under four different categories. Generally, um, you know, we're looking at the, the issues of the international classroom, the academics that we offer here, the research that's happening at the university and the reputation and the programs that we have and the expertise that we afford that are quite unique in many cases. Um, there's, of course, many topics that you can only study at Leiden University or the professors that we have here who have expertise in these areas are something that is world renowned. So a lot of students are drawn towards these particular types of aspects of the university overall. Now, in terms of that reputation, um, and there's other reasons of why students will look at Leiden, um, some of it comes down to that reputation. So yes, we are a top 100 ranked institution. So that really does draw a lot of students off the bat. But I think those other pieces on the slide before, and I'll sort of go back here just to list that, you know, it's one thing to have the reputation, but you really do need to have all these aspects of the programs when you're looking at them for your benefit, for your career in the future. So having that international classroom, making sure you're surrounded with other international students and Dutch students that really bring a different dynamic to your studies is critical here. Having that research academic environment is also critical to many of the careers that you might be looking at or the connections that you might be making in your network um, for after when you're when you're studying and you're looking at different jobs around the world, having a unique program that maybe isn't on offer somewhere else. These kinds of aspects are quite important when students are making that decision. So the history and reputation really kicks in with the rankings and, you know, we've been around for four and a half centuries, but the other pieces are there, which are the most important for your actual experience on campus. Now, a lot of students are also um, very keen on the cities of Leiden and The Hague, and I'll go into some details about Leiden and The Hague so you can get a sense and a look and feel of those uh, cities overall. The competitive cost of attendance um, and scholarship opportunities, which I'll go into detail. The whole experience of being a student here, in addition to your studies, which is quite critical, um, which involves just being here in the Netherlands as well. So, and I wanted to go over the support itself. 
So while I did talk about sort of the history and reputation, we are four and a half centuries old almost. Um, it's not so much about the, the age of the university. It is just about that prestige that comes along with that, that reputation that's known around the world. So your degree is portable. Other universities and employers know Leiden University around the world. They can reference it quite quickly. Um, a lot of notable alumni come from the institution, including our King Willem Alexander and our current uh, Prime Minister, uh, Mark Rutte, for example. Um, and like I talked about earlier, there's a lot of unique programs or impactful research. So a lot of what we look at are, is really how are we going to make a difference in this world through those five research areas that I talked about a bit earlier. Now, the inspiring locations, I think, are also important here. Uh, hopefully, you've looked at a map so you see where the Netherlands is and you can see where Leiden and The Hague is. But if not, I'm putting it here on the screen for you today. So we are located only about 15 or 20 minutes from the beach, both cities, and we're only about 10 minutes away from each other. But generally, you'll be studying a program that is offered in one city or the other, and you'll live in that city for the most part. So you might travel a little bit between Leiden and The Hague, but you'll tend to be in the city that you're studying in. And Leiden itself much uh, a medieval town. It's uh, the original city of the university. It's quite small, about 135,000 people or so, but one in 10 is a student. So a good 20,000 plus students from life. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Carolyn. Can you hear me? Yeah, something just happened there. I think you just dropped. So oh, okay. If you could share your screen again. I will. Sorry about that. Where did we leave off? Do you know? I will go. Sorry to the audience for that. We will continue on because I was talking about the city of Leiden. Yeah. And it is a, yeah, a green city, a lot of facilities across the city itself. Uh, six of our seven faculties are here, but there are many parks and areas for students to, to relax, but also to do sports and to really get out again and take a break from your studies because these things are quite important, but to also make friends and build your network for later on. Um, so a lot of students really love that small nature of the city. It's, it's very much a student type of city. Um, lots of organizations that students can belong to as well for social and academic reasons. Um, so there's like quite a lot on offer, I would say, in the city of Leiden overall. But of course, 10 minutes away is the city of The Hague. Um, and it is much more of a city. Now, of course, coming you might be coming from Istanbul or other large cities, which The Hague is still only about half a million people. So it's a smaller world city, but is a large city by Dutch standards. It's where the government is located. It's where the you know, international criminal courts are located, where the Organization for the Prevention of Chemical Weapons, NATO, hundreds of NGOs, the government, the consulates, you name it, it's in The Hague. And it is the international city of peace and justice, which is why we are there as a, as a university. All of the programs that we have on offer that touch upon this kind of theme are there in The Hague. So there's a reason for that, so that you'll be fully immersed in that kind of environment that is very much a young professional city. Um, it's a place where you may be doing internships or again, making that network, which will bring you into your career later on. Our main facility there is what's called the Weinhaven, which is part of, uh, you're looking at one of the, the lecture rooms in, the, in this particular building. It's actually, I think, the biggest lecture room in the university. We don't have too many rooms that are this big because your education is much more small scale. The Hague is very close to the beach. Um, so it's also, again, quite nice to either live out near the beach or uh, be able to get out into the dunes and the beach um, to, to, again, take a bit of a break in The Hague. So very different look and feel. Very much, you've got the high rises in The Hague. This is the center of our wine having complex um, where students in the summer, of course, or in the spring can be outside. Um, in the winter, it's a bit cold.
Hi, Carolyn, can you hear us? Karolin'in internetinde bir sorun var sanırım arkadaşlar. Ee, bu sırada sormak istediğiniz sorular varsa soru cevap bölümünden yönlendirebilirsiniz. Hi there. I'm not sure what's happening because my my Wi-Fi signal is very strong. Sorry about that for you yeah, in the audience. I, it's all right. You can just share your screen again. Yeah, we'll go back. Sorry to all of you in the audience for this uh, stop and go. But I was in the middle of starting to talk about financial matters um, because, of course, looking at costs of attendance are quite critical when you're looking at studying abroad. And tuition fees range depending on your EU status. So. If you remember a bit earlier, I talked about deadlines uh, being affected by your EU status, but also tuition fees. So the Dutch government sets the tuition fees for programs in the Netherlands each year. Um, so that means the vast majority of problems, programs, if you happen to have a dual nationality or an, an EU nationality as one of them, um, the tuition fees for next year are just over 2,300 euros per year. For the non-European Union or non-European Economic Area citizens, which I gather most of you in our audience here will fall into this category, the range is between just over 18,000 and about 28,000 euros per year, depending on the faculty of the program that you're going to be studying. So it's important to double check your tuition fee, depending on your program as well. Now, living expenses do range depending on, I say, your lifestyle. So anywhere between 800 and 1300 euros per month should cover things like rent, your food, insurance, uh, having a bike, your books, some social life, a little bit of local travel, these kinds of costs. Now, the range will be dependent on the kind of accommodation you arrange. So if you're sharing um, maybe a kitchen or bathroom with someone or having a roommate, you might be down towards that 800 euro range. If you're looking at a studio apartment, you might be closer to that 1300 euros per month, for example. So it's really dependent on the accommodation that you would secure. And there are some things that you can consider. If you do, again, happen to have an EU or EEA passport, you have access to loans from the Dutch government. All students can work part-time, so you can get a part-time job if you choose to. If you are non-EU, that means you have to have a work permit, but your employer would apply for that on your behalf. And we do have the Leiden Excellence Scholarship, which is our flagship scholarship, and it's a partial to full tuition depending on the situation, and that's determined by the scholarship committee. It's a highly competitive scholarship, though less than 1% of the applicants um, are awarded a scholarship, and we're really looking for the top students. So, you know, if you're top 10% in your class, this might be something for you. You can also check our scholarship page to see if there are any other scholarships that apply to your particular situation. You can also look at scholarships from your home country that might be applicable to studying abroad, and that might also include Leiden University as well. So when you're planning financially, it's important to double check all of those opportunities for yourself. And I wanted to mention the orientation year, which is for non-European students. If you'd like to stay after your master program, you're able to do so for a year to uh, do an internship, to look for a job, to work, for example. And then at the end of that year, if you found a job, then you're able to stay even longer should you choose to do that. So the orientation is there to help you hopefully stay in the Netherlands and contribute your talents after your master degree as well. Now, I talked about the cities of, of Leiden and The Hague, but the Dutch experience itself is also important to, to take a look at as well, because I think the Netherlands is a fairly easy destination in many ways, not all in all ways, but in many ways, because there's no language barrier. Everyone really speaks English to a very high level, so you won't have to worry about communication so much, I would say. Um, really, we're at the doorstep of Europe, meaning uh, two or three hours in any direction, you're in another country. So students are often excited to be able to experience a lot of the continents um, with inexpensive train um, tickets um, or sometimes even inexpensive plane tickets to be able to, to really access the rest of Europe. But of course, you can also still have a cultural immersion experience here in the Netherlands itself. So even though everyone speaks English, it doesn't mean that you know, the, the, the native language is Dutch. So you will have a different culture here, different foods, different, you know, music, different, um, you know, arts and culture opportunities. So students can really
really immerse themselves in having a Dutch experience when they're here, which I really, really think a lot of students um, enjoy. Because again, you're here to study, you're here to further your career and build your network. But part of that also means experiencing things outside your program as well. So I wanted to mention these things because the Netherlands is a wonderful destination to be able to experience all of these things. I also wanted to mention support because of course you're coming from abroad and that means that you will have different needs than debt students would have. And so of course our admissions office takes care of visa and residence permits um, on your behalf, although you do have to of course follow the rules and have the documents in for certain deadlines. Um, but if that's something you require to come to the Netherlands that's done through the university. So that's one less thing to worry about per se. And of course there'll be different kinds of support throughout your program. So you will have study advisors or program coordinators in your program, so academic support. You'll also have thesis supervisors, for example. But outside your program, you'll also have access to student counselors for many different reasons, whether that's legal and financial, whether that's psychological, whether it's um, you know, any kind of counselor that you may require, we have at the university where you can have access to those people. If you have a learning or a functional disability, we have the Fenestra Disability Center as well. So there are people on campus here to help you. The critical piece here is a cultural difference um, from the Netherlands to a lot of places around the world. And that means that you do have to be proactive. You have to be able to advocate for yourself, meaning you need to step up and ask for this assistance when you need it. Um, you need to reach out to the resources and the people who are willing to help you should you require it. So I think it's important to realize that. And that even extends to things like career services. There'll be lots of career advice, um, workshops, help when you're looking for jobs later on, uh, but you have to attend those and you have to seek those out and talk to the people in the careers office. You might even be interested in an extra excellence program. We have the Leiden Excellence uh, and Leadership Academy. So there's different opportunities to get involved on campus. And of course, when you're coming to the Netherlands, you will need some housing support in some ways. So we have a housing officer that collects all sorts of information and puts it on our website so you can find out how to look for housing on your own um, and how you can um, also sometimes through the university reserve some housing. So I did want to talk about student accommodation before I go to your questions. Because student accommodation in the Netherlands is different than other countries, um, because housing is not allowed to be owned by the universities. So it's not guaranteed and it can be challenging to secure. So I'd like to manage expectations here. Um, it means you have to start early when you're looking at housing. Um, for example, when I say early, if you're looking at a September start, um, if you want to apply for housing through the university, you need to do that sort of by February, March of that year. Um, when you're looking on your own, certainly April, May uh, would be the time frame to be looking for, for housing um, when you're coming in September. And it's important to not arrive in the Netherlands without having arranged uh, accommodation prior to your arrival. So use the resources that we put on our website. There's a whole section on finding housing on your own, all the different housing corporations and landlords um, that you can, you can find um, legitimate housing through that. But you can also look and see if there's opportunities to reserve housing through the university. Sometimes there are rooms that we're allowed to reserve through these housing organizations for you. But again, students have to apply quite early because there's not enough housing for all of the demand. So it's not guaranteed through the university. At the end of the day, it's your responsibility to secure your own accommodation. So being aware of what's required and when is quite critical um, and using the resources that we give you um, really help in this particular way. Now I am going to come to your questions in just a moment, but there are lots of opportunities here to be able to keep in touch with us um, going forward. So this is just a taster, an idea to tweak your interests and to, to be able to, to be able to contact me and to ask your questions today. But we have lots of very specific events that you can join in the springtime. So we have two online master open weeks in the third week of February and the second week of March. And these will be uh, in-depth um, events about a number of our programs, our master programs. We have access to presentations from all of our, our um, programs that participated in our master open day in the fall. So you have a lot of on-demand um, um, detailed information about programs that's available for you as well. There are things like virtual tours. So you can see the cities of Leiden and The Hague for yourself and the faculties that you might be uh, uh, studying at, for example. Um, you can chat with a student from most programs as well. And they're the students who are actually doing the program and are living in the city. So you can easily do that on our website. And of course, very simple things like following us on social media to get a look and feel of what's going on in campus. And you can always email us. Um, and the email address is vary depending on what you want to, to know, but generally speaking, 
the study at Leiden.univ.nl is where if you just need help, that's myself and my student assistants, we can help you further with just about anything. And if you need, if you're in the application process and you need help with the application itself, then our front, our student affairs office um, can be found at info at lineunit.nl, but also on our website. So none of these email addresses are important to memorize at this moment. They're at the bottom of every page on our website, so you can get in contact with us pretty quickly and pretty easily overall. Now, I know that was a bit choppy um, overall, and maybe you might have missed some of those things. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen at the moment, and we're going to go to the Q&A so that I can maybe answer some of your questions. I'm just gonna quickly double check as well. Uh, I'll go back through the chat just in case we miss some things. If you have questions or I missed something or you missed something, please put it in the Q&A now because I'll be able to get to it as well. Um, I do have a question right off the, the very bat here. A, a student is asking, can I apply for a master program even though I do not have the background? And without having too many details, the, the quick answer is probably no. Um, it doesn't mean that it's for sure no, but if you have nothing that is similar to what they're asking for on the website, then no, you would not be qualified to apply for that particular program. You'd have to look at a bachelor program um, in, the, in the area first to be able to go on to a master. Now, if you're finding that you think that you're close to, to, um, to the requirements that are listed and you only have maybe a couple of courses that are not um, either missing or some particular area that's missing, you are what you can look and see if the program offers what's called a pre-master program which is a bridging program of usually a semester um, of a few courses uh, maybe up to a year um, that might be possible for you to sort of fill those those deficiencies. So it's nothing that will take the place of a full bachelor program, not at all. It's mainly a few extra courses. And when you apply, the program will decide if you would qualify for a pre-master or the main master program itself. So you have to be fairly close to being um, uh, eligible for that particular program to do a pre-master if it's available. Not all programs have a pre-master, but they will mention it generally on their, their page. We have another... Um, question here um, from Burak that says, what should I do to make my application look better when applying? Um, and I wouldn't say that there's anything to do to make your application look better. I think it's important to follow the instructions, I think, to uh, provide what they're asking for very specifically, to uh, take the time to make sure that you have um, put all those documents together if they're asking for a research proposal or a motivational statement or a letter of recommendation that you follow their instructions and, and uh, really give them the information that they're looking for. I think those things are the most important. Um, if there's a program that you're applying to that has fairly expensive, extensive requirements, um, again, take the time to look through piece by piece so that you are giving them everything that they're asking for so they can really assess you fully on those things. A lot of the, you know, the, the ways to make it look better might be just really about your motivation. So show why this program at Leiden University, if they're asking you that question. If they are not asking for motivation, then you do not have to provide it and it will not make a difference in your admissions decision. So look at what they're asking for is, is my, um, my tip there, I would say. Um, we have a question about uh, books in our library, and yes, there are, we have uh, quite an extensive library system, and there are many uh, foreign languages that we deal with in our Faculty of Humanities. I believe there's over 60 at the Faculty of Humanities, so there will certainly be resources there for you in the, the library system and some of our very special um, collections as well. Um, had a question about um, the tuition fees. So yes, we sort of went over that at the end. So maybe my presentation did answer, but if not, the tuition fees do range between about 18,300 and 28,000 euros, depending on the program that you're looking to study. And the scholarships that are on offer, the main scholarship is the Light and Excellence Scholarship. It's a highly competitive scholarship that can cover partial to full tuition. So it will not cover full expenses. There are no full scholarships at Leiden University in general. You can take a look at our scholarship page to see if there are any others that match what you're looking for. However, for the most part, it's usually the Leiden Excellence Scholarship that most students will look to. Um, you can look at your home country and see if there are scholarships available that you can take abroad. That would be my other suggestion. Um, um, but you will have to make sure that it will cover the rest of your tuition um, and your living expenses to be able to come and study in the Netherlands in general. So hopefully that was very um, a, a bit um, thorough in the sense of what's available for Leiden University anyway. Um, we have another question about what the acceptance rate for Leiden University is, and, and unfortunately we don't track this as a whole because every program is separate from one another. Um, so the, it's, it's something that I don't have a statistic on, um, I'm sorry to say, every program will have a different acceptance rate 
um, depending on how many applications they get each year. But the core of it is they're looking for academically strong students, academically excellent students from good universities around the world that are motivated for this particular program. So a good match, a good fit with the program itself. Um, we have a question, is the humanities faculty in The Hague or Leiden? And the main humanities faculty is in Leiden, but every faculty does have a program or research going on in The Hague as well. But the vast majority of humanities programs are uh, in Leiden, so to speak. And I see here uh, another question, and you guys can keep having the questions come in here. Can you apply for an LLM if your bachelor is different? You do need to have an LLB to be able to apply to an LLM program. So you do have to either have the LLB or you have to be um, eligible for the bar exam or the legal exam in the country where you did your degree. So you have to be basically eligible to be a, a lawyer um, before you're applying to an LLM program. So it will outline that on every LLM um, requirements page. Um, so that is an important piece to, to consider. Um, and Amin is saying you're a bit late and that's okay. We had a bit of a choppy uh, internet reception throughout the presentation as well. Um, but you're asking if you have a chance to apply without a language score. And at this moment, it is still possible to apply and submit your application without providing your English proficiency scores at that time. That doesn't mean they're not required. So if for your situation they are required, you can submit them later. So they do have to be submitted, um, certainly prior to a visa deadline. Um, but it's best to, if you can, submit them all at the same time with all the other documents. It's only if it's not possible before a deadline that I would say to send them in later. So this is at this moment. That can change. It's under discussion. Um, so double check when you're applying what the rules will be. But at this moment and for this academic year, you're still able to submit those um, language scores a bit later. Now I'm just going to do a quick scan of the... Uh, the chat just in case we've missed any questions and of course uh, if you have any last minute questions you are definitely welcome to um, put them in the Q&A uh, absolutely and uh, I think we've covered everything because uh, Kareem asked that question in the Q&A so I think we have most of that done yeah, any last you. concerns or questions uh, pop them in but other than that I think we've covered everything's in it Yes, thank you very much for the great presentation, Caroline. It was yet another great session with you. And you covered all of the questions. Thank you for your answers, too. Uh, I just want you to put your email address in the chat. So if they have any further questions, they can contact you. Absolutely. Here. And in the meantime, I would like to thank the participants in Turkish as well. Katıldığınız için teşekkür ederiz arkadaşlar. Umarım sizin için de faydalı bir webinar olmuştur. Leiden University ile ilgili diğer sorularınız için da paylaşılmış olan mail adresinden Karolina ulaşabilirsiniz. Bir sonraki webinarlarımızda görüşmek üzere. Thank you very much again, Karolina. It was a pleasure to have you in IFT Talk. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.